Hello folks, welcome to Javi's Reviews. My name is Javi. Today I'm going to be reviewing the WeTech Desert Eagle .50. Uh, as you can see it's got all the trademarks there. Desert Eagle, Magnum Research, um, USA. And there, there's different variants. This was made in Israel, came back to the U United States. So uh, different brands will have different markings on there. Um, this is the US so it comes with the little uh, orange tip on there. I have not tried to take it off and honestly because I live in town I'm not gonna take it off because I don't want somebody mistaking me for having a real gun in town I have some very hyper vigilant neighbors shall we say so uh, I wouldn't want to do that um, the safety uh, I know that some reviewers have kind of pointed out that it's a little um, shaky um, almost like it's loose mine is not it's really solid you can see the red there ready to fire one of the interesting things about Desert Eagles in general, which I did not know when I purchased this, is that they are actually single action, meaning you have to manually uh, either pull the slide back um, or pull the trigger back in order for it to fire. And uh, that's just like the real thing. Uh, it's just how it's made. So uh, that's an interesting little factoid. Well, oh, that was double loaded instead of single loaded. Anyway, uh, so there it is. Uh, and then safety, of course. Now it's not going to fire. You can see it's got a pretty substantial slide action there. The barrel is actually fixed on this little guy. Um, and one of the things that just really impresses, has impressed me, and I think a lot of people, is how hefty this thing is. This thing weighs two and a half to three pounds. It's a little lighter than the original by about a pound. But then, then again, you know, this is aluminum. That one is uh, steel. Although the newer ones. I think that um, L6 have a, a lower frame of aluminum on the real one. This is all aluminum, and the uh, at least on the black version that I have here, the finish on it is remarkably durable. Uh, I, you know, I've put this in holsters, in and out, in and out. Um, even the you can see the slide. There's not a whole lot of wear on this thing, um, which is pretty cool. Fixed barrel. Uh, it, you can see in there that is where you would adjust the hop up and you need to use a very small little allen wrench uh, and it's a, a 1.27 is what I have in millimeters probably a 1.3 would work just as well I'm not 100% certain uh, and as far as uh, like the English uh, system something pretty small I would guess probably like a 0.5 or something like that um, the adjust uh, the hop-up is incredibly finicky with this uh, beast, and it takes a lot of adjustment. And actually, when I got mine, um, I could not, it, the BBs were just dropping immediately. They would drop, no matter how much I would adjust the hop-up on this thing. Um, they would just drop within 15 feet. And one of the uh, things that uh, I discovered, I actually had to open the thing up, it was brand new. And I'm going to illustrate it for you, or I have illustrated it for you, right here. So basically, this is the hop-up. Without opening it up, this is where you would uh, connect the Allen wrench to turn it. And this is kind of the screw that then pushes on this little lever. This right here is the hop-up, so this is where the BB would sit, and it goes out that way. And it, this is a little kind of like rubber um, cylindrical little tube sort of thing. And as you screw this in, it pushes the lever down and it pushes the rubber piece down into the hop-up, pushes it down, air comes in, pushes the BB out, and it creates top spin by rubbing on that top part of the hop-up. Uh, what had happened with mine was that it had kind of, the screw had dug in a hole on this lever right at the top where it connects, and it was not actually pushing it down. It was just burrowing farther into the thing. So I would recommend if you are having problems where the hop-up is not functioning, open it up. Uh, there's videos on how to open it up. I'm not actually going to do it. And make sure that it's not actually just kind of burrowing into it. It was just stuck in place. Once I opened it up, then I had to turn the hop-up um, past that point where it kind of burrowed to push this lever down. And then it started to actually um, create backspin and, and spin the, the BB up. And um, so now it's much more accurate. There is kind of an interesting thing with this, uh, with this Desert Eagle, and that is that when 
it seems to aim down and I haven't really figured out what it is. It, since the barrel is fixed, it probably has something to do with the barrel itself being pointed in a downward direction or this sight. You can kind of see uh, how there's white, so there's daylight underneath there. And I haven't opened it up to see, but you can actually push this down. So if you push it down, the sight picture is gonna, it's gonna raise, you're gonna raise the nose, which means it's gonna start shooting higher. So that very well could be the solution to it. Opening it up and tightening it that down or just gluing it, whatever you wanna do. Um, either way, it, it does tend to shoot low. And I've seen review videos where it seems to do that for other people as well. Um, it could just be mine, it could just be a select few, but either way, that's, uh, that's some of the things that I've encountered with it. Overall, it's been really reliable, and it is just, I don't, I don't think, it, it's hard to kind of get perspective for how, how big this pistol is until you put it up right next to a full-size pistol. So this is the ASG CZ P09. This is a full-size handgun. The real steel version is 9mm. And there you have it. That's the size difference. And the weight difference is at least a pound to maybe a pound and a half. A lot of the weight in the Desert Eagle is going to be in the um, magazine. The magazine is just an outright brute. Uh, and I never really found this uh, information out there in any videos that I saw, but it's actually metal. It's actually um, probably, I would guess, aluminum like the rest of it. And you can kind of see how it's wearing right there. So it's aluminum. Um, unfortunately, you cannot see the BBs. So you're never going to be able to get an accurate measure of how many are in there. You're just going to have to make a mental count. Uh, it will fit 20 T5. And when you get... Uh, gas in there the right way. It's kind of finicky getting gas in there. I get about two to two and a half magazines before it starts to fit, um, kind of uh, get a little weak and, and stop pushing the slide back. Um, and to get the gas in there, I use propane because I'm cheap and I don't like spending money. With this little setup, you can actually put uh, oil in there, silicone oil, and it'll kind of mix it in as the gas is going in. So it's basically the same thing as green gas. Same FPS, same everything, uh, just about a third the price. So, get it in there, get a good seal, about 10 seconds, and for whatever reason, it tends to leak on this, and I think it's actually the nozzle, I don't think it's the magazine. Um, about 10 seconds or so, and you can do a little um, kind of repetitive, maybe two, three seconds, if you really want to maximize how much you get in there, so it doesn't get too cold. Uh, and then you just slide it right in and let's take a look at what the uh, what the kickback feels like so we got it on fire there you go it's got a good amount of kick and I've shot it in comparison so having this thing in one hand and having the Ruger um, Mark IV 22, uh, so 22 rimfire cartridge, and they have about the same amount of kick, uh, which is pretty cool. I would say the 22 is a little bit sharper, just because the action on it is going to be a lot faster um, with all those exploding gases. So the action is a little bit slower on this one, but the recoil management ends up being about the same as the 22, and that's really why I got this thing was to to practice um, managing recoil. Even though 22 is not doesn't have a lot of recoil, it's something. And it, and it helps you to be able to practice uh, all the techniques that are going to help you to manage that recoil, but also recoil on bigger handguns like a 9mm, a 45, 10mm, or you know you start getting into the magnum rounds like the 50 AE. And there's probably not a whole lot you can do to manage the recoil on that one um, completely, but you know every little bit helps. Um, so then one of the things too that's uh, wasn't kind of mentioned in any video that I saw was the fact that you can actually load this thing up with a regular speed loader. You don't have to use that silly one that they give you, that tube loader. Uh, what I do is I just kind of hold between both sides, kind of the open sides here, just like that so nothing can uh, leak out. And then I just kind of jam them in there, just like you would with the other ones, the one that the speed loader they give you. 
and um, at first I was a little apprehensive that it might not work, but it does. It works fine. And uh, off it goes. You can just fill it up. And like I said, it fits about 25, 26. I think I've gotten 25 in there. Um, and then just stick it back in there. And that's actually one of the things, which you saw right there, it'll, it'll uh, snap itself shut. Sometimes when you're uh, jamming the magazine in there, because it tends to catch on the slide um, or the magazine release, you have to kind of get behind it a little bit, and then it's ready to fire again. So anyway, those are kind of the things that I've dealt with, uh, the things that I enjoy about it. It's, got, uh, it's pretty accurate. Um, it just shoots low, which is I would rather have it shoot high because then you can kind of see what you're actually aiming at unfortunately you kind of have to cover your objective uh, or your target in order to be able to hit it which with a huge muzzle like that and a huge barrel it kind of makes it hard to see what you're aiming at if it's really far away like a you know person you're in a game or something like that it might make it a little bit more difficult um, but with smaller targets if you're just uh, practicing target practice getting uh see actually seeing the bullseye um if you're close enough it's going to be kind of hard because of that so i'm going to mess around with it and see if i can't get uh with the uh the front sight or the barrel messing with the barrel see if i can get it back in line um now maybe make a video if i uh, find a successful way to do that to kind of update you guys but anyway that's all i've got for you today thank you for watching my video and as always, uh, if you have any questions that I can answer um, having this product or things that you would like me to review, uh, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. Thanks again.